And we are, as a people, inherently and historically Wake up. opposed to the secret societies, the se secret oaths, and the secret proceedings. The show that asks questions about why we don't ask questions. What the hell is going on? This is Conspiracy Queries with Alan Park. Conspiracy Queries with Alan Park. I am Alan Park, and these are the Conspiracy Queries, the teaser. We've been gone for a little while, and thanks for asking why. We'll get to that in the next episode, but it is 9-11. Again, it's the 15th anniversary of 9-11, and uh, for me, that's just way, way too long uh, from time of incident until now. And everything that's taken place in the intervening years has been a bit horrendous, don't you think? Uh, war going on all the time, people getting their heads cut off, taxes going up, intervention from our own governments protecting us and our security by invading our private spaces. Oh, this feels good to be back and talking about this stuff again. Doesn't it just make you feel great? I think the more we know about it, the better we are to protect ourselves against it. But as I say, this is 9-11-2016, and uh, just a quick little interview today with Danish journalist Tommy Hansen. Haven't spoken to him since 2013, but he's constantly posting things regarding 9-11. Uh, he feels it's been fully exposed and uh, no longer hidden. You just have to turn over the right rocks. They're there. And uh, Tommy has uh, free21.org as a website with a, a ton of documentation there, beautiful photographs. They print that for you. They'll send it to you, hard copy magazine stuff, or you can just look at it on the Internet. But do go there and learn what you can about the lie that has us in the uncomfortable position in which we now live. Um, Tommy Hansen is our interview today, and uh, soon after that, folks, we will be back with a regular schedule of shows, and our premiere episode, not including this little teaser here, is uh, John Rappaport talking about all kinds of things, so you'll be definitely needing to check into that. We've got John Rappaport coming up, Mark Taliano, who is a, uh, a Canadian researcher on his way, if not there already, in Syria. Boots on the ground, his boots on the ground. He's there taking a look and talking to the people and finding the differences between what we are told in the mainstream media and what he is about to find out from uh, people that actually live there. So uh, I'm very excited. I'm very happy to be back with a series of shows. And as I say, this is just a little taster to, uh, to commemorate 9-11 and one of the biggest conspiracies of all time. So, um, as I say, we're with Tommy Hansen, the Danish journalist who uh, lost his job at a mainstream publication when he started to ask questions about the illogical patterns of 9-11. And uh, it's a fun little time. He's in Portugal enjoying himself, as he well should be. That's about all that needs to be said right now, so let's just go to our interview. Hello, Tommy. Well, hello again, Anna. So how's Portugal? Portugal is great. Uh, I'm just sitting here on, on, uh, on my hillside, so to speak, on my terrace, looking at another hillside. Uh -huh. And, uh, and from, here, uh, from here, the world looks uh, just great. Now, you said terrace, <laughs> not, not terrorist, right? Uh, no, no, there are no terrorists here. No, uh, I, I, I'm, it's sort of an illusion when you're here. Actually, <laughs> I don't think there are as many terrorists as they tell no, us. No, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, well, everybody, of almost half the world, know by now how it's uh, all how we, we we've all been set up. And uh, of course, it's not. It's, it is uh, a huge uh, stage through the media. Do you think it's half the world knows by now? Half the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have I haven't spoken to half the world, but uh, uh, but uh, it's 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 out and in in every corner it's uh, 
Do you really think that that half of the world or, or a good number of the world now know more that 9-11 was a lie? And it was because uh, more people have been turning off the mainstream media. And what you're telling me now, uh, we've had some audio troubles, folks. It's been crazy trying to hook up with Tommy. Uh, but uh, you're telling me now that um, people have now realized that the media is complicit in, in what is an ongoing war uh, uh, what did you say? There was the control of uh, you know, Russia and uh, manipulating these existing wars that we have today. Yeah, well, uh, you, you could, uh, I, 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 a bit provocatively, I, I, I call NATO uh, propaganda because uh, there is uh, definitely a group of journalists uh, which operate internationally in every country in Europe uh, which is connected to the Council on Foreign Relations in the U.S. and has been so for years and years and years, and only the people uh, joining this, these small clubs in every country are the ones uh, responsible for telling us about foreign policy and stuff. And that's what happened to you initially, right, back on 9-11. You were a reporter, uh, gainfully employed. Yeah, well, no, uh, what happened to me was, was actually I, for, for a couple of years I waited for my colleagues uh, my high-ranked colleagues uh, uh, to do their jobs, because I, I, I was uh, I was uh, convinced that if there was something wrong about 9/11, my my colleagues in the mainstream media would do their job and we would know about it. But it became clear to me that not only did they not do their jobs, they uh, closed their eyes to it, and that's what's become uh, so totally clear now, 15 years later, because there's not one single journalist. In Denmark, I can say for sure, uh, who who can stand up and say anything against people who question the official 9/11 uh, uh, theory, because right, it, but it's now been you are laid questioning. out in the open. Yeah, well, no, no I'm not even questioning uh, questioning it anymore. Uh, I mean, the job's been done, and and uh, and we don't even my in my opinion, we don't need a, a new investigation because the job has been done by good scientists and, and people all over the world. You've got these publications that are only in German. Uh, tell us where we can see uh, those. Yeah, well, well no, it's partly in German. The, the, um, the concept is that every article you find, you'll find, find a lot of English uh, articles as well from uh, John Pilger and, and other good guys. Uh, and every article, you can look for a PDF on the right-hand side of the article because open this PDF and it out. Then you'll see the concept. Then you'll see why we in Germany have made a, we have started a people's movement. And, and it's, it's really crazy because people can print out these very well layouted articles as if it came from, from a, a magazine and they can distribute them. And that's exactly what happening, what's happening in Germany. People uh, in groups in all the big cities, they go into frequent1.org and they find articles that uh, describe some things that they want their neighbor to know. And then they uh, take action. And that's what it's all about. And because we have this huge amount, we have 70 authors uh, uh, in German, we are able to put together a traditional physical magazine, which we have. It's also available on the German website for download for free. But we have um, um, almost 2,000 subscribers now who, uh, become, who, who, who get 10 copies each, meaning they distribute the nine. So we have, from, from day one, in, within a year, We've put out 150,000 magazines in the German market, and we are rolling. We are really rolling. Well, that might explain why we had such a tough time getting connected with our call today. <laughs> well, well, uh, I, I, I wouldn't go into conspiracy theories, and, and, and you know that. But uh, sure, it, it's, it's sort of funny, isn't it? It, it is but funny. Because uh, uh, definitely what we are doing is we are going against the mainstream media, and we are doing the journalism job as it should be done. And that's no big deal, and every good journalist knows to, to keep uh, faith to, to the ideas. And, and, and it's really no big deal. 
there are just no others doing it. And that's become clear. So this, these dossiers on, on, uh, that are available, you have these on your Facebook page, is that right? These uh, dossier 911? Um, no, it's on my free 21. It's on my free 21. It's on free 21, okay. Com- yeah, that we have a complete dossier on 9-11, that's right. In 1963, President Kennedy was killed, and then they had the Warren Commission shortly thereafter, uh, which was all nonsense. And then eventually, in 1978, they had the House Investigations uh, Committee into Assassinations. And that committee yeah. in, in 1978 did, in fact, rule that uh, Kennedy's assassination was, in fact, a conspiracy. They didn't get too specific with it, but they admitted that it was well beyond just Lee Harvey Oswald. And that seemed like a long time, 15 years, 1978 after 1963. But that's 15 years, and yeah. here we are 15 years on from 9-11. It's been way too long to wait, and it doesn't seem yeah. like we're any closer to getting any official recognition. That depends where you look. Uh, because uh, the United States, the Congress, has uh, issued a, a law making it possible for the 9-11 victims to sue Saudi Arabia for responsibility for 9-11. And that's a huge step. It was uh, unanimous. It means both sides of the Congress. So the people are saying we want the Saudis to be responsible, to be held responsible for this. Um, you don't find this hugely portrayed in on CNN and and all the no. other media, but it's a fact, and it's a, a, and it's a well known fact uh, by now. The Saudis were were bankrolling a lot of this, or they were organizing it, or was it just that most of the uh, uh, alleged hijackers were from Saudi Arabia? Oh no, it's, well, that was that was just a part of it. Uh, one has to understand the journalist Wayne Matson. Uh, explains it very well, where, where he says that um, uh, as a consequence of the dollar for oil agreement in '73, uh, the old Bush actually made his own private CIA in uh, in the Saudi um, uh, secret services, which were the U.S. Uh, had to build up as part of the agreement. So all the black black deals that he couldn't get through in, in Congress or wouldn't even ask Congress of doing, he could uh, freely do through the Saudis. And um, the, the connection between the Bush families and the Saudis, uh, the, the royal family, a business connection, a bit of the connections between the Bin Laden family and the Bush family, all this is laid open, it's historical facts. So what we have is a bunch of crooks in Saudi Arabia conspiring with a bunch of crooks in the United States, and they've made themselves so bloody rich that you, you, you won't even imagine. And by doing so, they've come to a point where they need to exist. What do they need? They need war, war and conflict. Oh, war to exist, okay. If, yeah, if you look at the um, American national household, it's divided into two parts. One part is... Is uh, how do you say is is uh, by law um, um, directed how much is going to be spent on that, and the other part, the politicians are free to go, so to speak. And in this free part, fifty percent of the national household goes to war costs. <laughs> that means we have a nation dependent on war. You have to realize that. Sure. Well, we do that in Canada, too, because we've recently increased uh, our military shipments to Saudi Arabia. Do you know that? Yeah, everyone does. Yeah. And the Saudis take it, take it with open arms. And uh, Germany uh, uh, sends them uh, missiles, and, and South, uh, China, South uh, Africa is now going to make a new bomb factory uh, in, in Saudi Arabia, enabled to produce enough bombs for them to continue bombing Yemen. You know, the, this little war, this little bombing that we don't talk about, that's been going on for one and a half year, almost every week, with the particip- participation of bombs from Obama, officially only 52 in uh, last year, but uh, a couple of thousand bombs from Saudi ha- has, has done their job. In Yemen? In Yemen, and we're told that they're hunting uh, Shi'ist extremists, and um, no one questions that. So 
their wild game. We can just go and, and bomb them. And that's what we do in the civilized world. It was about six months ago, I think, or maybe even less than that, that, that it was discovered that uh, this nasty little thing that's going around during international conflicts is the bombing of hospitals occupied by doctors without borders. Um, yeah, and that happened yeah. in Yemen, and it was the Saudis again. It's 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 all over. It's systematically. It's always a war on infrastructure. That's the very very first thing that happens, and it happened in Libya. It happened in Yugoslavia. It happens every time that we are to introduce democracy somewhere. We start by destroying the infrastructure, meaning no hospitals, no highways, no railways, everything is being hit, and um, and a lot of people are dying in the process, but, but the point is, that's why, that's how we secure that an area, the region, is going to take a decade to get on its feet again. And if you look at, at, at Syria today, uh, what's left of it, it's going to take ages before these villages, you can even live there again. And the big war makers know that. That's a part of war strategy. Strategy It is to destroy in order to let the enemy never, ever rise again. And that's how they do it. it it's not a pretty sight, but it's very, very traditional. And the Saudis are fanning the flames of Wahhabism as as well, right? I mean, that just makes everybody nuts, and they get into that crazy... Yeah, well, they have the most extreme and perverted version of Islam, and the uppermost perverted extreme version of this extreme version is what ISIS is all about. And that's why the Saudis uh, support the ISIS. Right. So it's, it's all connected. It's a bunch of madmen, crooks, being made able by a lot of, uh, another bunch of crooks to rule the world. But it, it is about to come to an end. How is that going to happen? Well, people are waking up, and not only so protest people or, uh, or uh, left-wing people, people are waking up all over. We have, um, uh, with, with our magazine, for instance, we have connections in the German military, high up, and uh, they, they tell us, that what we're doing is totally all right, and it, 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 it's what it should be done. And what they say is, we we have the same opinion, but we have nowhere to go with it. The German military has nowhere to go with it? Even high-ranked military people don't like this development that's happening right now in Europe, where the U.S. is renewing their nuclear weapons uh, as we speak in several countries right now. Tactical nukes are being installed under the pretension that uh, it's about a modernization of the um, uh, nuclear uh, defense uh, uh, strategy. But what they're doing is they're actually changing um, long-range atomic weapons into short-range, which means it's a first-strike weapon, meaning it's a very, very nasty signal to send to the Russians, it's a very, it's a very dangerous escalation of the of the already dangerous situation. And military are there to defend their countries. They are not there to take part in an attack war made by greedy warmongers in the United States. I'm sorry to say, but that's the fact. That's how it's going to change because one of these days, these people are not going to push the button on on the. A drone operator, one of these days they are going to say stop. Yeah. So that's where we are now because of 9-11. What can you tell the person yeah. that is only now starting to wake up that maybe this was not as it was told? What are some of the most powerful pieces of information that you can recommend regarding the falsehood of the attacks that day on, on the towers and the, and the Pentagon? Well, there are several very good websites. I could definitely say architects and engineers for nine troop. You can Google it. Okay. Uh, and I would also say go on consensus911.org, which is also by scientists, and uh, you'll find all the all the information you need. But for the for, but for the very simple, say, could you imagine that uh, on a given day, three high risers 
are going to collapse as a result of being attacked with two airplanes. Please just consider that. Yeah. And, and start, start with that. Because then you'll see, as, as, uh, as you go along, everything you look at around, as you go along, you'll very soon realize that everyone will come to the same conclusion, I'm, I'm definitely sure, and that's exactly what's, what time has proven, because they can't keep this huge affair uh, hidden for, for ages, and, and it's, 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 it is too late, the story is out, the emperor has no clothes, and he only needs to realize now. Yeah. Well, it is pretty obvious to me that, that the story that they put out initially just doesn't hold any uh, physical sense. It's not likely. Um, it, it, Physics-wise, I mean, if you've seen buildings collapse and on and on and on, and I think a lot of people just didn't want to put time into that. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, also, also just simple, plain human facts, like, for instance, can you imagine a little tiny... Arab standing with a box cutter before a well-trained two-meter-high bodybuilder type with with uh, uh, fighter flight experience, and he would give up his airplane to such a man, and that should have happened four four times on that day. You know the people knowing these pilots, they say he would never ever have done so. He would have slapped him in the face. He would have laughed at him, and he has fought far worse threats than a little tiny Arab standing there with a the box cutter. I, I, I really need to rest my case on that. Yeah. No, I, I hear you. That doesn't make any sense to me, and the more you look at it, I think the no real way. magic was in convincing everybody is that back then, uh, during the day of the attack, during that time, so many more people did believe in uh, everything CNN says is true, everything ABC News says is true, and and I think now over time they've started to realize it's not true at all. Me included. It was a wake up call for me too. Totally. Sure. You you can't believe what you're being told. No, I mean I, I mean I, I was a journalist for twenty years before that, and I, right. I I blindly believed in the in free independent press, and and as you said, if if CNN told us so, it would be true. Period. Right. But. Uh, now I know better, and thank God, because, uh, as I said, we, we are doing our job now, not only in German, where we have a magazine, but in England, and we are publishing in Russian, in Hungarian, in uh, coming up, and Portuguese parallel now. So this is spreading out through Europe like a, like a fire, really. Well, on behalf we of, about, I'm sure, unbelievable amount of people, Tommy, I want to thank you for your efforts in, in that effort, because uh, it, the more we need to know, we need to know sooner rather than later. We don't want to wait another 15 years until we can turn things around. You can, you can talk every year, even once a year, we talk again. Oh, yeah, we'll talk again, absolutely. Well, Tommy, uh, thank you very much. Once again, it's free21.org, folks. Go over there and take a look at it. It's some pretty impressive photojournalism and uh, a lot of great uh, facts written down for you. Tommy, I don't know how you're going to yeah. celebrate 9-11 or if you, if you mark it or... or uh, I'll, I'll, maybe, I'll maybe have a, a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's just another day along, along a, a, a long, long road, which I'm very happy to walk. Well, thank you for walking that road, Tommy. You've sure shown me a lot of previously hidden things, and I thank you for it. <laughs> Thank you very much for your, your, your doing a great job, too. I, I, I do follow you to time. Oh, thank you. <laughs> From time to time is probably the safest way to do it. Yeah, <laughs> I think so, too. So keep on doing your, your job, too. We'll talk to you later, Tommy. Thanks very much. Yeah. That was Conspiracy Queries with Alan Parr. Subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher.com. Please comment there and post your ConQ review. To help us create more episodes, please visit Patreon.com slash Conspiracy Queries. That's Patreon with an E. Any donations go toward continued ConQ production and expansion. And we also have a cool logo. And who wouldn't want that on a t-shirt? You can also send comments, complaints, or queries of your own on Twitter at Con underscore Queries. And our website, ConspiracyQueries.com. As well as our Facebook page, same thing. And email conspiracyqueries at gmail.com and alancomic at gmail.com thank you for listening
look at it on the internet, but do go there and learn what you can about the lie that has us in the uncomfortable position in which we now live. Um, Tommy Hansen is our interview today, and uh, soon after that, folks, we will be back with a regular schedule of shows, and our premiere episode, not including this little teaser here, is uh, John Rappaport talking about all kinds of things, so you'll be Definitely needing to check into that. We've got John Rappaport coming up. Mark Taliano, who is a, uh, a Canadian researcher on his way, if not there already, in Syria. Boots on the ground. His boots on the ground. He's there taking a look and talking to the people and finding the differences between what we are told in the mainstream media and what he is about to find out from uh, people that actually live there. So uh, I'm very excited. I'm very happy to be back with a series of shows. And as I say, this is just a little taster to, uh, to commemorate 9-11 and one of the biggest conspiracies of all time. So um, as I say, we're with Tommy Hansen, the Danish journalist who uh, lost his job at a mainstream publication when he started to ask questions about the illogical patterns of 9-11. And uh, it's a fun little time. He's in Portugal enjoying himself, as he well should be. That's about all that needs to be said right now, so let's just go to our interview. Hello, Tommy. Well, hello again, Anna. So how's Portugal? Portugal is great. Uh, I'm just sitting here on, on, uh, on my hillside, so to speak, on my terrace, looking at another hillside. Uh -huh. And uh, and from here, uh, from here, the world looks uh, just great. Now you said terrace, <laughs> not not terrorist, right? Uh, no, no, there are no terrorists here. No, <laughs> uh, I, 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 it's sort of an illusion when you're here. Actually, I don't think there are as many terrorists as they tell no, us. No, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, well, everybody, of almost half the world, know by now how it's uh, all how we, we we've all been set up, and uh, that, of that course it is not. It's, it is a, a huge uh, stage through the media. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically Wake up. opposed to secret societies. The secret, secret oath and the secret for proceedings. The show that asks questions about why we don't ask questions. What the hell is going on? This is Conspiracy Queries with Alan Park. Conspiracy Queries with Alan Park. I am Alan Park, and these are the Conspiracy Queries, the teaser. We've been gone for a little while, and thanks for asking why. We'll get to that in the next episode, but it is 9-11. Again, it's the 15th anniversary of 9-11, and uh, for me, that's just way, way too long uh, from time of incident until now and everything that's taken place in the intervening years it's been a bit horrendous don't you think uh war going on all the time people getting their heads cut off taxes going up intervention from our own governments protecting us and our security by invading our private spaces. Oh, this feels good to be back and talking about this stuff again. Doesn't it just make you feel great? I think the more we know about it, the better we are to protect ourselves against it. But as I say, this is 9-11. 2016, and uh, just a quick little interview today with Danish journalist Tommy Hansen. Haven't spoken to him since 2013, but he's constantly posting things regarding 9-11. Uh, he feels it's been fully exposed and uh, no longer hidden. You just have to turn over the right rocks. They're there. And uh, Tommy has uh, free21.org as a website with a, a ton of documentation there, beautiful photographs, they print that for you, they'll send it to you, hard copy magazine stuff where you can just look. Uh, definitely what we are doing is we are going against the mainstream media and we are doing the journalism job as it should be done. 
and that's no big deal. And every good journalist knows to to keep uh, faith to to the ideas, and 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 it's really no big deal. There are just no others doing it, and that's become clear. So this, these dossiers on, on, uh, that are available, you have these on your Facebook page, is that right? These uh, dossier 911? Um, no, it's on my free 21. It's on my free 21. It's on free 21, there we have okay. A, yeah, there we have a complete dossier on 911, that's right. In 1963, President Kennedy was killed, and then they had the Warren Commission shortly thereafter. Uh, which was all nonsense, and then eventually, in 1978, they had the House Investigations uh, Committee into assassinations, and that committee yeah. in, in 1978 did, in fact, rule that uh, Kennedy's assassination was, in fact, a conspiracy. They didn't get too specific with it, but they admitted that it was well beyond just Lee Harvey Oswald. And that seemed like a long time, 15 years, 1978 after 1963. But that's 15 years. And yeah. here we are 15 years on from 9-11. It's been way too long to wait. And it doesn't seem yeah. like we're any closer to getting any official recognition. That depends where you look. Uh, because uh, the United States, the Congress has uh, issued a, a law making it possible for the 9-11 victims to sue Saudi Arabia for responsibility for 9-11. And that's a huge step. That was uh, unanimous. It means both sides of the Congress. So the people are saying, we want the Saudis to be responsible, to be held responsible for this. Um, you don't find this hugely portrayed in, on CNN and, and all the no. other media, but it's a fact. And it's a, a, and it's a well-known fact uh, by now. The Saudis were were bankrolling a lot of this, or they were organizing it, or was it just that most of the uh, uh, yeah? Do you think it's I'm, half the world knows by now? Half the world? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have I haven't spoken to half the world, but uh, uh, but uh, it's 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 out and in in every corner. It's. Uh, big Do you really think that <laughs> that half of the world or, or a good number of the world now know? more that 9-11 was a lie and it was because uh, more people have been turning off the mainstream media and what you're telling me now uh, we've had some audio troubles folks it's been crazy trying to hook up with Tommy uh, but uh, you're telling me now that um, people have now realized that the media is complicit in in what is an ongoing war uh, uh, what did you say there was the control of uh, you know, Russia and uh, manipulating these existing wars that we have today. Yeah, well, uh, you, you could, uh, I, 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 a bit provocatively, I, I, I call NATO uh, propaganda because uh, there is uh, definitely a group of journalists uh, which operate internationally in every country in Europe, uh, which is connected to the Council on Foreign Relations in the US and has been so for years and years and years. And only the people uh, joining this, these small clubs in every country are the ones uh, responsible for telling us about foreign policy and stuff. And that's what happened to you initially, right? Back on 9-11, you were a reporter, uh, gainfully employed? Yeah, well, no, uh, what happened to me was, was actually I, for, for a couple of years, I waited for my colleagues, uh, my high-ranked colleagues, uh, uh, to do their jobs. Because I, I, I was, uh, I was uh, convinced that if there was something wrong about 9-11, my, my colleagues in the mainstream media would do their job and we would know about it. But it became clear to me that not only did they not do their jobs, they uh, closed their eyes to it. And that's what's become uh, so totally clear now, 15 years later, because there's not one single journalist in Denmark, I can say for sure, uh, who, who can stand up and say, anything against people who question the official 9-11 uh, uh, theory. Because right, it, but now you are questioning. Out in the open. Yeah, well, no, I'm not even questioning, uh, questioning it anymore. Uh, I mean, the job's been done, and, and, uh, and we don't even, my, in my opinion, we don't need a, a new investigation because the job has been done by good scientists and, and people all over the world. You've got these publications that are only in German, 
Uh, tell us where we can see uh, those. Yeah, well, well no, it's partly in German. The, the, um, the concept is that every article you find, you'll find, find a lot of English uh, articles as well from uh, John Pilger and, and other good guys. Uh, and every article, you can look for a PDF on the right-hand side of the article because open this PDF and it out. Then you'll see the concept. Then you'll see why we in Germany have made a, we have started a people's movement. And, and it's, it's really crazy because people can print out these very well layouted articles as if it came from, from a, a magazine and they can distribute them. And that's exactly what happening, what's happening in Germany. People uh, in groups in all the big cities, they go into free21.org and they find articles that describe some things that they want their neighbor to know. And then they um, take action. And that's what it's all about. And because we have this huge amount, we have 70 authors uh, uh, in German, we are able to put together a traditional physical magazine, which we have. It's also available on the German website for download for free. But we have um, um, almost 2,000 subscribers now who uh, become who, who, who get 10 copies each, meaning they distribute the nine. So we have, from, from day one, to in, within a year, We've put out 150,000 magazines in the German market, and we are rolling. We are really rolling. Well, that might explain why we had such a tough time getting connected with our call today. <laughs> well, well, uh, I, I, I wouldn't go into conspiracy theories, and, and, and you know that, but sure, it, it's, it's sort of funny, isn't it? It, it is but funny. Because, uh, 